Oh no. We got a chicken leg. How's it going guys? Welcome to Shop Forming Garage. Today we're looking at this 22 Kia Sorento. Uh, it's got a check engine light and it uh, is running bad. It's running really bad. So I'm gonna get in here and show you how we can diagnose this thing and fix it. Get rid of that chicken light. And do that right now. <laughs> oh no. All right, we have a 22 Kia Sorento. It's a 2.5 liter non turbo and it has a misfire and you can feel it when it's running it's a dead misfire and uh, i went ahead and uh checked the codes so uh, let's see what codes we got and this is uh the kds system and we have this code this uh p219 df o or zero for uh, cylinder two air fuel ratio imbalance and then we have the p zero uh 302 for a cylinder two misfire so if you got a misfire you're definitely going to have an imbalance in the air fuel ratio so um there's no sense in pursuing air fuel ratio imbalance because we can feel the misfire going on and if we actually went into the flow charts for these codes they're going to run us down a rabbit hole for sure um, because it's going to check all kinds of uh, junk that we don't really need to be checking. So I want to show you how I can uh, do my own flow chart, come up with my own uh, diagnostic on this, and we can uh, narrow it down, find out exactly what it is, pinpoint it, you know. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to go into the data list, and I'm going to look at the... Um, the engine data and I'm gonna uh, see what cylinder it, it shows cylinder 2 misfire but let's check it and make sure that we know for sure that it's cylinder 2 that's misfiring and uh, I can do that by going into this data right here let's see if I can show this to you so this is the data list uh, hopefully you can see at least some of this uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the grouping and I'm going to come down here and find misfire. Oops, just the misfire data. So this is showing me all the cylinders. Um, <clears throat> and it's showing me a uh, total count um, of emissions related and uh, catalytic uh, damaging uh, type misfires. So we're going to start the vehicle. Let me start it up. I can feel it misfiring. And there we see that is cylinder number two and it is counting up misfires like crazy so we definitely know cylinder number two the thing says it's cylinder number two we just want to check that and make sure and I'm not gonna let the thing run uh, very long because uh, if it is dumping fuel then um, you know that could do some catalytic uh, converter damage although I don't think it is um, I suspect that it's probably an injector just because it's kind of a known issue only a lot of times these injectors they'll just stick open and just dump fuel you know and it'll be running so rich and it'll be dumping uh like raw fuel out of the exhaust you know you can smell it you know you can hardly breathe um, this thing is not blowing any smoke or anything out of the exhaust at all so um we need to find out you know uh what's going on what is it you know is it an injector is it ignition um is it ignition pulse is it spark plug is it um uh, ignition coil uh is it wiring wiring harness pcm it could be any of that stuff and of course if we go down the rabbit hole of these diagnostic flow charts we're just definitely going to be checking you know pcm uh, wiring harnesses and stuff like that but i'm going to jump ahead and just get the basic major components checked out and not the pcm 
because you can't diagnose a PCM, you just diagnose everything else and then whatever's left over is probably the problem and that's how they diagnose PCMs. It's uh, a process of elimination. So uh, we're gonna do a process of elimination but we're gonna do it a little bit different and I'll show you how, to, how we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, I, um, let me pull this cover off of here. And get into these ignition coils um, and uh, it's everything's pointing to cylinder number two so we're definitely going to take uh, cylinder number two coil out what we're going to do is um, start swapping things you know uh, ignition coils spark plugs um, everything like that i'm going to take these number one three one two and three ignition coil out I'm going to swap ignition coil number two for ignition coil number three so I'll stick ignition coil number two back in and I'll plug it in just to remind me hey we've already swapped that one so I got ignition coil number three I'm gonna set it right here we're gonna put it into number two number one we're leaving the ignition coil in but what I'm gonna do is pull the spark plug out number two number two and number one spark plugs that's number one doesn't look bad set that down this is number two it doesn't smell like fuel or anything it doesn't look like it's running rich so I'm going to take number two spark plug and I'm going to put it into number one. And I'm going to take number one spark plug and I'm going to put it into number two. So we're swapping one and two spark plugs and two and three ignition coils. And then we'll start it back up. This is number three ignition coil. I'm putting it into number two. And I'll put number one ignition coil back into number one, of course. And uh, we're gonna start it back up and we're gonna look at the data. See if anything's changed, you know? If, if it shows a number three misfire now, then we know it's a bad ignition coil. If it shows a number one misfire now, then we know it's a bad spark plug. If it still shows number two, then it ain't either. It's gotta be something else and then we'll just move on from there. So let's... Um, Let's do that. Let's uh, hook up the uh, look at the data again and see see what happens. Okay, what I've done is I went into this thing and I uh, cleared the codes. Um, sometimes it's a really good idea to clear the codes when you're doing a diagnostic like this because if there is an issue um, that's causing a misfire that um, uh, the PCM it recognizes, hey, there's a misfire here, there's a short or something like that. It can cause damage. It could cause uh, catalytic converter damage or something like that. What it does is it will shut down that um, injector so that it won't be dumping a bunch of fuel and ruin your catalytic converter. So um, that could cause you to misdiagnose it. So we clear the code so that if it did shut down an injector, it'll go ahead and it'll let it uh, start running again. So uh, I went in and cleared the code. I'm gonna start it up now. I have the data list up right here and let's see. Let's see if it's uh, what, what cylinder it went to. So let's start it up. And the check engine light's off right now because I just cleared the code, but it's definitely misfiring. And I can see that it is cylinder number two still. Cylinder number two is definitely misfiring. So it's not the ignition coil. So let me turn this off. It's not the ignition coil. It's not the spark plug. It's gotta be something else. So is the ignition coil getting drive from the PCM? Maybe it's there's something wrong with the PCM or maybe there's something wrong with the uh, wiring harness and it's not letting, it's not, not telling the ignition coil to fire. You know and um, so that could you know wouldn't matter what ignition coil you put in there if it's not telling you the fire it ain't gonna fire so we're gonna go ahead and uh, hook up uh, a noid light 
to it and we're gonna start it up and we're gonna see if we're getting a pulse uh, to the ignition uh, coil and um, we'll go from there. I'm listening for a pulse. Okay, all kidding aside, uh, we need to get into the, uh, um, well, we're not going to look at a flow chart. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, wiring schematic and see, we need to know what we need to get into to um, check the pulse on this. Okay, here is the wiring schematic for the ignition coils. And here is ignition coil number two. And we got power coming in from the uh, junction block and we have a ground this is a ground one in here and then we have this uh, circuit coming from the PCM and this is going to be your pulse circuit um, so the power is to give this ignition coil its power so it can spark um, and we got the pulse from the PCM and we got the ground uh, of course we need all three and uh, so what we want to do is we want to go between two and one, two being the pulse and one being the ground to see if we're getting a, a pulse from here. We're going to stick a noid light on and we're going to start it up and we're going to see if that thing blinks. And uh, here is the ignition coil number two um, connector and we got one is ground, two is PCM and of course this isn't telling us much. It just shows us what it looks like. This shows us, oh, well, it could be, let's see, number two. It could be brown or green. Um, and it depends on, you know, if you have a mobilizer or without mobilizer, a uh, smart key. Um, but we know the number two and number one is black. So let's uh, check that out and see what we see. Okay, I'm going to want to disconnect this connector right here. And it looks like we got black and green, so that's one and two right there. And this is my Noid light, and I call it a Noid light. I, I made this out of an old um, uh, Kia's uh, Soul mood lighting. You know, there's actually a little LED in there. And so with LEDs, you always want to make sure that you got positive to positive and negative to negative because you cannot change the polarity on them they will not work so let me get this hooked up and these uh these are very very thin i am going to be pushing this in there but uh you know a little disclaimer i should let you know never ever put stuff into the ends of these connectors right here um, because uh, you can widen them out, but these are very, very thin, and I'm not going to poke them in all the way. I'm just going to stick them in to where they're touching. So um, let me uh, get this uh, set up, and uh, we'll see what it does. Okay, I got those plugged in, and of course you don't want these things to short together, right? And we're going to be looking for a light uh, blinking right inside there. Of course, the ignition coil is not going to be plugged in, and so it's going to be misfiring, but you know, it's already misfiring on number two. So we're not going to run it very long. Uh, let me start it up. Get in here. Start it up. And you can see, you can see it uh, flashing right there. So. Yeah, it is uh, most definitely, um, of course, depending on the frequency of, of the camera, depending on the frequency of the camera, depends on if you can see that flashing, but uh, I guarantee you it is flashing. Uh, so let me turn it off. So um, we do have pulse. We have pulse at the uh, ignition coil. So um, that, that's not it, that's not the issue. We got uh, a good ignition coil, we got a good spark plug, we got pulse, and plug that thing back in. So now what? Now what do we do? Um, gonna move on to injectors. Um, and let's see if we got pulse to the number two injector. Now this uh, system right here, it has a, a uh, low pressure, I don't know why that's open. So it has a low pressure 
fuel line, a, a multi-port uh, fuel injection fuel rail right here. And it's got four multi-port injectors. It also, the return from this goes to this high pressure pump right here, which injects high, high, high pressure into this line, which goes way down in there and at very bottom way back down inside there is a, um, uh, that's the GDI injector fuel rail. And usually, uh, the most part from what I've seen, it's those GDI injectors. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, multi-port injectors, they don't run all the time. They only run during specific times. They're in regular driving and stuff. It's always the GDI injector. So um, we're gonna go ahead and check the GDI injector. We're gonna check injector number two and see if we got pulse with it running just the same way we did with this thing with the uh, ignition cool. We're gonna check the injector, see if it's got injector drive. Here is the um, it's wiring schematic for the fuel injectors for the GDI injector, okay? Um, and it's funny because we got one, three, four, two, that's the firing order. Uh, and we're looking at number two right here. Number two injector, it's got two wires going through. They're both coming from the PCM. And we can see which one's positive and which one's negative. And they go through this connector right here. So this is where we're gonna be testing it, this connector. So we're looking for a wire uh, L, that stands for blue, you know, L is blue, and uh, R, red. So we're looking for a blue and red wire and it's gonna be on pin eight and nine. Now we can look at the connector and it shows all these connectors. What the heck is all, are all these connectors? So one side of the connector is for the wiring harness side and the other side of the connector is for the injector side. And you can see right here, injector number two, positive and, and minus. So red is the positive in this case and blue is the negative. So uh, let's uh, find those and let's, uh, let's check those out. So here is the connector that we're looking for right here. And um, of course, this is the harness side and this is the injector side. So we're gonna be going into this side and we're gonna be back probing it. Um, so let me get this uh, connector out of here. So we can look at it. And let's see, we're looking for eight and nine, which are right on the sides and there, there they are right there. We got the blue and the red. Red being the uh, positive and blue being the negative. So I'm going to take this thing right here and I'm going to back probe and hopefully these will poke in there enough if we can get my hand down in here. And I don't know if you can see that. Well, let me get this hooked up and I'll show you. Okay, so this is how I got this hooked up. And um, I have uh, my true back probing wires. Let me see if I can get in here. You can see that. Get the true back probing wires uh, going in there. Um, red is uh, positive, blue is, is negative. And I got them coming over here. Hook to the Noid light right here. Here's a Noid light. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, start it up. See, see what it does. So go ahead and Hit the brake, start button. Still misfiring. Oh yeah. So hopefully you can see that uh, they are blinking. So we are getting injector drive. So, okay, so it's not the PCM. It's not the wiring. Let me turn this off. It's not the wiring harness. It's not the PCM. Um, at least up until that point right there, we know that it's it's all good it's getting injector drive we know it's getting a pulse at the ignition coil we know that that spark plug is sparking it just ain't firing 
because there ain't any fuel getting to it, more, more than likely. So, what now? Well, we got the wire from the, from this connector right here going to the injector fuel rail and all of that is located underneath this. So we can't get to it. You don't want to pull all this off just to probe that and then put it all back together to see if you're getting pulls in there. So how can we check this uh, wiring harness from here to the injector and the injector itself? So uh, we could ohm out the injector and uh, even if we don't have a spec, we could compare that injector to another one just to see you know if if we're even connected or if we have an open circuit in between um yeah you don't even need a spec for that you just uh, ohm out one of the other injectors and then ohm out that injector and then you'll know if it's connected and you'll know if it if it's basically the same then it's probably good right but we know um from past experience that um, the injector could ohm out perfectly fine, but maybe the pentel stuck or something like that, and that's why it's not working. So just because it ohms out fine doesn't mean that it's good, but at least you would know that it's got a good connection and it's not an open circuit, right? But I got another way. I got another way we can do this, and uh, I'll show you that right now. Okay, what are we doing here? So right here you see i got my trusty bore scope and it is uh, hooked up to my tablet here you can see i move it All right and i have my female pins plugged into the back of the male connect let's turn this light on to the male connectors right there going to um the two wires for uh, cylinder two injector okay and i got them coming up over here i got the uh, black one the negative one hooked to the negative part of my power probe right here and then the positive one here and when i touch this i don't know if you can hear that it's showing that there is a connection so just that just that alone tells me that uh, there's no open in the circuit right um just uh let you know uh you but I'm gonna be really careful about using a power probe on a vehicle. Make sure that you know you're absolutely sure which circuit you're going into and if you can power it up because you can burn wiring harnesses, you know, you can start a fire, you can burn the car to the ground. Um, I've seriously seen some major, major damage to vehicles from people using power probes on them that they didn't know um, what they were doing, you know, or you know they hooked into the wrong circuit they weren't sure of the circuit they're like that's got to be it and they just went into it and once uh circuits start to burn sometimes they start to melt and they get into other circuits that are right next to them because wiring harnesses got you know a bunch of wires together you know and um what happens is they start to melt and then they start to short to each other and sometimes it's before the fuse and stuff and, and the fuse won't blow the thing is just going to continuously burn uh, like a fuse seriously a wiring harness will burn like a fuse right through the vehicle and it can catch on fire and you can burn your vehicle down I'm, i guarantee you so you got to be real careful with this um but um uh, i mean we've looked at the wiring schematic and everything we know that those are the two connectors so uh let's uh get into this and uh, i'll show you i'll show you what i'm doing uh so i'm gonna set you up right here so you can uh see what the bore scope is is looking at and i'm going to stick this into cylinder number two i'll try and get this in there which is not that easy come on get in there <laughs> i know it fits come on okay so there's cylinder number two and i'm going to swap this over to the side camera the, this does have a side camera so I can see the side so I need to rotate this around carefully slowly I'm looking for the injector so I still don't see an injector yet no injector there it is okay so if I can keep it there that's gonna be the hard part keeping it there okay so there's the injector right there that's the injector. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this probe up 
I'm going to turn the sound off so it won't be beeping. I'm going to hook this probe up. I'm going to hit the positive, and when that happens, there's fuel. Believe me, there's a lot of fuel pressure in that line. That injector should spray. So let me push on it and see what happens. Pushing. I can hear my probe making noise, but I get nothing. There's nothing coming out of there. So it's not working. So it's not working at all. Uh, how can we check that and make sure that that is actually a good test? Well, we're gonna do the same test. I don't know if you noticed, but I got number one and two out. So we're gonna do the same test. I'm gonna switch, switch these over to uh, number one. I'm gonna get into the wiring schematic. Uh, let's look at the schematic. Where is it? Why did I bury it? Um, okay, here it is. The schematic for cylinder number one. We're looking for white and black. Um, and it's um, number one and two. So I'm gonna look down here and there is, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. So number one and two are right there on this end, right? And what's funny about this is the black wire, oh, that's positive. And the white wire, that's negative. So we just gotta make sure of that. We don't wanna do them backwards. So I'm gonna uh, move these over to injector number one, and we're gonna do the same test on injector number one. Okay, I got, uh, I got these switched over. So uh, let's do the same thing. Um, so this thing is still sitting in number two. So I'm gonna pull it out, move it over to number one. Uh, let me switch this. Um, that's a split. Uh, so I can see what I'm doing. Try and get this down in there. Come on, get in there. Okay, that's cylinder number one. Oops. Sorry about that. Oh, my stand's falling. Okay. Let me switch that to the side. So, gotta do the same thing. Let's look for the injector. No injector. No injector. Where is it? You can see that valve is open. There it is. Okay, so trying to keep this. Come on. There's the injector. Can I keep it in the same spot? Oh, you know, I think I can hold it. Okay, so there's injector. Let's see what happens when I hit this. There, you can see it just squirted. So that, that obviously works. So you could see injector number one is squirting whenever I um, supply it a 12 volt power, powering ground. And injector number two, ah, no squirting. So that means we need to replace injector number two. That's the whole problem. That's why uh, we have a misfire. So that means this is all gotta come out of here. So. Um, we better start taking this apart and uh, get that injector out.
Okay, I got the thing out of there and it was like real easy, real easy to get off, you know, except for the fact that the part where I dropped my 12 millimeter socket down on top of the engine undercover and I had to put the thing on a lift and get up there and then uh, find it. And then the bolts that are on the bottom that hook to this piece right here. And then you got this piece and this piece, you know, and so, yeah, it, no, it, it wasn't easy, <laughs> but, um, uh, and the whole idea is, uh, I'm, you can kind of get to these a little bit easier from the bottom, but then you gotta take the engine undercover off. And the whole idea was to not have to take the engine undercover off because you can get them from the top. So, you know, it, it's, you know, whatever you, you choose to do, but here is what we're looking at. So take this little protective insulation off of here. And there, right there, is injector number two. I don't know if you can even see it. It's, it's up in there somewhere, like right there. So I need to get this high pressure line off right here. <clears throat> and then pull these bolts out and pull the entire fuel rail out. Hopefully not uh, disconnecting any of these other injectors from the fuel rail um, and this pipe right here that goes uh, around here and it hooks up to here this needs to be replaced um, because uh, the way these flanges are right here they're one use only so whenever you tighten these down they bend to, to seal and once you loosen them and t stick them back on, they don't go on exactly the same way every time. And then there's a possibility that they can leak and leaking uh, fuel can cause fires and then cars can burn down. So it's uh, this uh, part right here is a um, one use only part. And whenever you remove it, you have to replace it. I do have the parts right here. And here is that, that new fuel fuel line, high pressure fuel line and of course I got uh, um, gaskets for the intake manifold and then here is our injector so let me get this fuel rail off of here and uh, let's get this injector out and let's replace it Okay, you can see how easy that was. I didn't want to uh, pull this entire fuel rail off without the injectors. I wanted the injectors to come with it and I was trying and trying to get these things out. They just do not want to come out. They're like, nope, we're not going. I don't, I, I try not to mess with the seal right here. Although these seals are good and I'm just gonna be careful putting the rail back in, um, but uh, I just don't, like messing with them i think it's better if they stay in but i mean we'll be all right and here's the here's the injector um that is the issue and we are going to put a brand new one on here's the new one right here oh look no injector oh out of the bag okay brand new injector going in and I'll just get this in real quick and put everything all back together and uh, let's just see what happens
So I got all of this, everything put back together, everything put on, and let's just start it up and see what it does. It may take a little bit, just because it's got to build up. Yeah, I had to uh, build up fuel pressure and it definitely running better. It's take a little little bit for it to, um, to straighten out there, but uh, let's look at the data and see, uh, make sure that uh, we don't have anything, um, that we don't have any misfires. So let's check it out. Okay, let's look at this data right here. Let me start it up. I'm not seeing any misfires at all. Put my foot on the gas. And it's running good. Um, yeah, I had to uh, clear the codes. Um, so uh, after I had first started it, um, it had a code set for number two misfire still, and I hadn't cleared the code. I cleared the code. The thing runs fine. Oh, there's one thing that I need to check. I uh, forgot to check, and I definitely need to check this. Uh, let me pull this back off of here. We want to look, make absolutely sure that I have no fuel leaks. I'm going to put my hand around the, I know you can't see this, but I'm going to put my hand around the high pressure fuel pipe down there where it connects on and um, no, nah, I don't feel any leaks at all, but I uh, definitely want to check on that and make sure that we don't have any fuel leaks. So um, it's running good. Uh, no more codes, no more misfires. So that's how you diagnose a misfire, misfiring or non-injecting injector. So there you go guys, um, diagnosing without the flow charts. Um, I'm not saying that flow charts are bad, just that if we had gone by the flow charts, especially the one that's giving us a, um, the uh, incorrect fuel ratio for cylinder two, I guarantee you we'd probably still be oming out injector harnesses and stuff right now rather than uh, having the vehicle finished. Um, doesn't always work out that way, but um, if you have a good understanding as to how these systems work, um, there can be shortcuts. Of course, there's also a chance that you take the shortcut, and I've done this many times too. You take the shortcut and um, then the result uh, ends up being nothing. So then you go to go back to the beginning with the flow chart and then you just wasted a bunch of time with your shortcut, you know, and uh, so you know, that's, that's just the way it goes. But um, I knew that uh, these uh, vehicles have issues with that um, GDI uh, fuel injectors. We've replaced quite a bit, quite a few of them. So um, it was definitely worth a shot, uh, you know, going that direction. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hey, uh, check out uh, Shop Farmer Garage on Facebook. There's a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. And I will see you in the next one.